welcome back to my channel. So today I have a very exciting video. I'm basically gonna be comparing high-end versus drugstore makeup. I actually have half and half makeup right now using half drugstore, half high-end. I really want you guys to guess which one is drugstore and which one is high-end right now and also get your friends involved. Screenshot this video right now and basically send it to one of your friends and see if they can guess as well which side is drugstore and which side is high-end. Don't forget to let me know in the comments whether they were right or not. But yeah, I really wanted to do another one of these videos because I haven't done one in a while and I have found so many good dupes for high-end makeup, especially popular high-end makeup as well. I honestly am so, so happy with how this makeup look turned out. It literally looks identical. If I came on here right now and you guys didn't know I was doing this video, you'd never be able to tell that I'm wearing different makeup on each side of my face. So I mean, that is pretty impressive. So if you guys wanna see what I used on my face, then let's get on into the video. Okay guys, so we're gonna start off with priming our face. So for the high-end side, we're gonna be using my trusty YSL Touche Clark Primer, which retails for $29.50. And this primer is gonna go up against this one right here, which is the drugstore version. Now this is the Flawless Original Primer by Barry M, which only costs $5.99. Now these primers are a lot different from each other because obviously this one is clear, whereas this one has more of a white consistency in the bottle. But when they're applied to the skin, they have the same kind of like silicone-y consistency. And I honestly feel like they're just as good as each other. So I've just got a little bit of the Barry M one on my finger right here, and I'm just gonna kind of dab it onto the skin and just apply it to my left hand side. So as I said, as you're blending this into the skin, it becomes clear, but obviously in the bottle, it is white in color. And now I'm gonna go in with the YSL primer and just blend that into the skin on the other side. Okay, moving on to the foundation. For the high-end side, I'm gonna be using the trusty Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk. This is one of my favorite high-end foundations, and it is a whopping 42 pounds, which is just so expensive. So a dupe for this that I found in the drugstore is this one right here. Now this is the main Dream Satin Liquid. This is only $7.99, so I mean, in comparison, that's a big, big price difference. I honestly think that they're quite close in consistency. The finish is kind of like luminous and very glowy and dewy, which I really like about both of these foundations. So I've got two different beauty blenders that I'm gonna be using to apply the foundation. Please excuse this one. My cat Sky has gotten into it and it's got lots of claw marks. So I'm gonna apply the Luminous Silk onto the high-end side first. Just kind of, kind of dab that all over the skin. I honestly really, really love this foundation. It is so sad how expensive it is though. It's kind of got like a medium coverage, so it's perfect for everyday sort of wear. It's like not too much and not too high in coverage, if that makes any sense. I absolutely love this as my everyday foundation. And now for the drugstore side, I'll be taking some of the Maybelline Dream Satin and just kind of dotting it all over my face again. I've got quite a few blemishes on my cheek and this foundation really covers them up very well. And again, I love the fact that it's so wearable throughout the day. It doesn't feel like too much on your skin, but it's like the perfect amount of coverage as well. So I'm just gonna blend that in with the other beauty blender and look at this. It's just blending so beautifully into the skin. I mean, look at my skin. I honestly don't feel like there's any difference whatsoever. Obviously, we're gonna test this for a few hours and see how the foundation wears, but for the initial appearance, there is literally no difference. Now to make the skin even brighter, we're gonna be reaching for some illuminating sticks. Now I have one here which is from YSL. This is a very well-known like radiant stick and this is called the Touche Clart Radiance Touch. This retails for £25.50 which is quite pricey for a little product like this but don't worry guys, I do have a dupe. This is the Dream Lumi Touch by Maybelline and this only costs $7.99. Both of the products have a very similar concept. They both have a brush. This one has a twisty end to get all of the product up whereas this one has a button. This one is a little bit more pinky toned than this one, but honestly, once you blend it into the skin, there's not really that much difference. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just kind of conceal underneath my eyes a little bit and also kind of bring that onto the cheekbone to highlight a little bit with that as well. I'm gonna pop it on my brow bone and kind of my lid as well to prime it. And I'm even gonna go down the side of my nose with this as well. Then I'm gonna take the drugstore alternative and basically do the same thing. Okay, so this is what the products look like on my skin. Honestly, like I said this side is a lot more pink toned but we're just gonna blend this out with the warmth of our finger So 
So this is what my skin looks like now. Honestly, I literally see no difference. I feel like both of the products are really great, but if you don't have the money to splurge on a YSL product, you might as well just opt for the drugstore. Now I'm gonna do a little bit more concealing because your girl's got some under eye circles going on. So we're gonna go for the Tarte Shape Tape on the high end. This retails for 20 pounds roughly. And then we're gonna go for the very hyped over concealer from Revolution. This is called the Conceal and Define Full Coverage Concealer and Contour. I got this in shade C1, I believe, which is like the lightest shade I could find. This only retails for four pounds. So these two concealers have been highly compared in the beauty world by so many bloggers. And I'm so glad that there's finally a dupe for the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer because it's honestly like life. It is one of the best concealers I've ever tried. So I'm really, really excited that there's a drugstore alternative now. So obviously the packaging of the two products are quite a bit different. The drugstore side is a lot smaller. It has only 3.4 mil, whereas the Tarte one has 10 mil inside the product. So obviously you are paying a lot more for this one because you get a lot more product as well. So I'm just gonna apply both of the concealers at the same time and then blend them out so we can kind of get a comparison of the colors. Okay, so just from looking at it, the Tarte Shape Tape is a lot darker and a lot more warm toned, whereas the Revolution Concealer is a lot more like yellow toned. It's a little bit lighter in shade. So I'm just gonna blend both of them out now with my damp beauty blenders. So the Tarte Shape Tape blended out so well. This is literally why it's one of my favorite concealers. And then for the Revolution side, oh my goodness, this product is so high in coverage. It is just like the Tarte Shape Tape. So this is what both of the concealers look like. They have covered up my dark circles so well. They're both just as good as each other, honestly, in my opinion. So I feel like the Revolution one is a very, very good dupe for the Tarte Shape Tape. So now it's time for a little bit of contouring to add some definition into the face. So for the high end side, I'm gonna be using the Fenty Beauty Match Stick. And this is in shade Amber. This is such a nice cool toned contour stick. Now this retails for 21 pounds, which is a little bit on the pricey side. So I have a drugstore alternative alternative and that is the Maybelline Duo Stick. This is actually called the V-Shape Duo Stick Contour and Highlight because it actually has two ends. I'm sure you guys are familiar with this product. I use it quite a lot. So the reason why I think this is the dupe for this is because they both have that cool toned contour shade to them. Whereas a lot of drugstore products actually have a really warm toned kind of color. So first up, let's take the Fenty Beauty Contour Stick and just apply it in all the usual places where I contour, like my cheekbone, my temple and my forehead, and then also a little bit on the side of the nose. And then we're gonna take the Maybelline one as well and just basically do the same. So I'm contouring the cheekbone, the forehead, temple, and also the side of that nose. Gotta get that nose snatched. Already, if you look at both of these contour sticks on my face, they literally look identical. It looks as if I've applied one product that's the same. The colors are just so cool toned, which I absolutely love. So to get a fair test of the contour, I actually have two of the same brushes by NYX. So I'm just gonna use one to blend out this side and use the other to blend out this side. This literally blends out like a dream. I absolutely love the Fenty Beauty sticks. I'm now gonna go into the other side with the other brush and just blend that in as well. Oh my goodness, literally this blends out exactly as well as the Fenty Beauty one, which is actually ridiculous because it's like almost half the price. If anything, the Maybelline one actually blends out even better. <laughs> and this is the finished result. Absolutely loving both of these. Obviously, if you can't splurge on the Fenty Beauty one, you can obviously opt for the Maybelline one, which is so great. Now I'm gonna set everything into place so that it doesn't budge. So for the high-end side, I have my MAC Studio Fix powder. This retails for $24.50 and and the dupe for it is the Rimmel Stay Matte Powder, which is honestly such a staple piece in like every teenager's bag. And the best thing about it is that it's only $3.99, which is literally just incredible. I'm just gonna apply each one to each side with two different brushes so that it's a fair test, of course. And now I'm gonna use the Rimmel Powder as well. Now moving on to blush, I literally have found the best dupe for the Too Faced Sweetheart Blusher. This is in shade Love Hangover, I'm pretty sure this is what it looks like. This, you guys, retails for 25 pounds, which obviously is quite pricey for a blusher. So I literally found the best dupe for this at the drugstore, which literally looks the same on the skin once it's applied. And that is the Lutty London Blush Crush in shade Zane. I've actually broken the compact on it, but they are literally so close. So this is 25 pounds and this this is £3.70 because it's actually on sale right now at Superdrug. So, I mean, get yourself one. So first up, I'm gonna apply this one to this side 
and it is just such a beautiful color. I love this. And then I'm gonna take the Lutty London blusher and apply it with a different brush. So obviously we get a fair test and just apply it to the left hand side. I mean, come on, it literally looks like the same blush. Okay, moving on to highlighter. I am so excited for this one because this is honestly my favorite high end highlighter that I found a drugstore dupe for, and that is the Becca Moonstone highlighter. So this retails for 15 pounds. Now I found a three pound dupe at the drugstore, which is by MUA. Now I have to say, if you walk past this in Superdrug, you'd never think that this would resemble Moonstone by Becca because they just look so different in the pan but once you swatch them let me tell you they literally are so close in color so firstly I'm gonna take Moonstone Becca and I'm gonna apply that onto the high end side this is honestly one of my go-to highlighters that I've been wearing so often recently but now I'm gonna take the MUA one on a different brush and just apply that onto the other side and let me just tell you this is this is something you guys I don't know if it's actually showing up on camera that much but it is so beautiful. Again, it's really finely milled, which is so difficult to find at the drugstore, I feel like, because most highlighters at the drugstore are so like glittery and chunky. Next up, I'm gonna move on to eyebrows. So for the high-end side, we've got the Anastasia Brow Definer, which is retailing for 24 pounds. And for the drugstore side, I'm gonna be using the NYX Brow Definer, which only retails for eight pounds. I swatched both of these on my hand. They literally are the same shade and they have the same formula as well. I really, really love both of these, but honestly, if you don't have the money to splurge on an eyebrow product, just pick this one up because it's so good. I really like the Anastasia one because it's so cool toned and I hate my brows looking like really warm because obviously compared to my hair my hair's quite cool toned as well it just looks really really stupid and now for the drugstore side I'm just gonna be taking the NYX one and just literally filling in any sparse areas of my brow this one literally glides on like a dream like it's actually really really easy to use and I find that it's actually a little bit creamier than the Anastasia one which is definitely a little bit easier to work with okay so brows are done they literally look identical. I can't even tell the difference. Can you guys? Now I'm gonna move on to the eyes. I'm really excited for this actually because I have found such a good dupe for a really popular palette by Urban Decay. And that is the Naked Heat palette. You guys, I'm sure you've heard of this already. This retails for $39.50. Now for the drugstore side, I have this one, which is so similar. I mean, obviously there's quite a lot of difference in packaging and stuff, but once you really look at the shades, there is so many good dupes in this palette for this palette. So this palette is by Revolution, it's called the Reloaded Neutrals 2. Honestly, this is such a good dupe and it's only four pounds. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with my high-end side. So I'm gonna take my Naked Heat palette and I'm gonna go for quite a orangey, smoky sort of makeup look. So first up, I'm gonna take the shade Chaser and just use that as like a transition color through my crease. I love the Urban Decay palettes, they're so good. And I feel like it's definitely one of those palettes that's kind of like become a staple in the beauty industry. I'm then gonna take the shade Sourced, which is this one right here. It's a little bit more of an orangey kind of color. And I'm gonna kind of pop that all over the lid and just blend it out into the transition color. I'm then gonna take the shade Low Blow and just use this throughout the crease to kind of deepen up that look. I'm then gonna take the shade Scorched, which is this one here. It's like a very pretty shimmery burnt orange sort of color. This is such a beautiful color. I love it. And I love the fact that there is literally no fallout with this eyeshadow palette either. So now let's take the drugstore alternative and recreate the same look. So first up, I'm gonna take this shade right here, which I feel like is the closest to the transition color that we used from the heat palette. And again, I'm gonna take that on a new brush and just kind of pop that through the crease to replicate the same look. I'm then gonna take the color next to it to pop all over the lid and kind of blend into the crease, same way we did on this eye. Oh my God, so far, this is literally looking identical. And I have to say, with the Revolution palette, you get such good payoff for the price you pay. Because you actually get 15 different shades and the pans of each of the eyeshadow are actually quite big compared to the Urban Decay palette where you only get 12 shades and the pans are a lot thinner as well. However, with the Urban Decay palette, you are obviously paying for a more luxurious formula of eyeshadow. They're a lot more creamy than these ones. However, they do feel a little bit more chalky and you do get the occasional fallout every now and again. And 
lastly, we're gonna take this shade right here and kind of mix it with this one as well to make the perfect shade of Scorched that we used from the heat palette for like the very lid of our eye. So now that the eyeshadow is finished, we can move on to the eyeliner. Now for the high-end side, I'm gonna be using the YSL Couture Eyeliner. This retails for 25 pounds, which again is quite expensive for an eyeliner. But I have a drugstore dupe, which is the Collection Eyeliner. This only retails for 2.99. The reason why I think that this is quite a good dupe for this is because they have the same applicator. Obviously, the formula is gonna be a little bit different. It's not gonna be exactly the same. I mean, you are paying a lot more for this product right here. They both have a very thin applicator. So first up, I've got my YSL eyeliner and I'm just gonna do my regular winged liner with this. So this is the YSL winged liner. I honestly have to say, this is one of my favorite like high-end eyeliners. It has lasted me a long time. I've had this for quite a few months now and it hasn't dried out yet. So I mean, that does say something and you are definitely paying a lot more for the formula formula, the finish, and how long it lasts. But I have also used the Collection Eyeliner for quite some time as well, since I was a teenager basically. So I do really like this one, and I can vouch that it lasts for a long time. It's very black, it's very pigmented. That's the eyeliner done. Literally, I see no difference whatsoever in appearance. Obviously, we're gonna see how it wears, but I mean, look, it literally looks no different. Now, for mascara, I have a very good dupe for the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara, which is literally everyone's favorite. This retails like $19 50 on the UK websites. Now, for the drugstore side, I have this one right here, which only retails for $11.99, and this is the L'Oreal Paris Paradise Ecstatic Mascara. Now, this is the reason why I say that they're a close dupe. The ones are practically identical. So first up, I'm gonna take the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara. This, again, is one of my favorite, like, cult favorite mascaras. I love, love, love it. Now, I'm gonna take the L'Oreal Mascara and just apply a few coats of that onto my lash is Wow, this mascara, I've forgotten how good this is actually. It gives the lashes a very similar effect to the Too Faced mascara because it makes them like really thick, almost a little bit clumpy if you apply more than one layer. So that is my mascara finished. As you can see, the effects are just so, so close in appearance. But now I'm gonna move on to my lip liner. I actually don't have a dupe for a lip liner today, unfortunately, so I'm just gonna end up using one for the whole lip. The one I'm gonna be using is the Maybelline X Gigi Hadid lip liner. I think this is in shade Torah. For the high end, I have the Tarte Lip Paint in shade Salty. Now, as a dupe of this, I have the Maybelline Superstay Matte Ink in shade Poet. This is £15, whereas this is only £9.99. Obviously, the price point isn't that much different, but I feel like you get a lot more product in this one, and obviously, Maybelline is such an accessible brand worldwide, whereas this you would have to get online if you live in the UK, because we don't have Tarte in the UK. So I'm gonna go ahead and just apply the Tarte lip paint first on the right hand side which is my high end side and then I'm of course going to take the drugstore side which is the Maybelline one and this is the finished look I honestly love how this turned out I feel like everything looks identical. If you looked at my face right now, you would not be able to tell that I'm wearing two different products on each side of the face for literally everything. Overall, I feel like this makeup just says you guys really don't have to spend so much money on high-end makeup. It is not necessary. Drugstore makeup has really stepped up their game. I mean, look at this. But anyways, I really want to put this makeup to the test to really see which side is going to be more long-lasting, which side is going to wear quicker. So I'm just going to check in with you guys after a few hours of eating, drinking, all that good stuff to really see how this makeup is gonna last on my skin. So I'm gonna head off right now and I'll see you guys in a little bit. Okay guys, so I am back. It has probably been like five hours or so. I've had my dinner now. It's around 10 o'clock at the moment. I've basically just come to check in with you guys to see how my makeup is holding up. From afar, it actually looks still really good. From up close, however, that's a different story. So my lipstick is the first thing I noticed and half of it has kind of started to crumble off. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's it's kind of like all come off on the inner part of my mouth but more so towards the high-end side interestingly enough I didn't actually think this would happen I thought the drugstore side would be less longer lasting but actually the drugstore side still looks really good I mean obviously apart from the inner part of the mouth but it's holding up pretty well now let's take a look at the under eye creases I feel like they're always pretty bad but on this occasion, they're as bad as each other. So, I mean, there's not really too much difference. Maybe this one is a little bit worse, but to be fair, there's not that much difference. Let's have a look at the foundation overall. So, 
I mean, look at this. There's quite a lot of blemishes coming through from the high end side. So you can literally see all of my spots through. So I feel like the Luminous Silk actually isn't that long lasting. However, it does make your skin look beautiful when you first apply it. Now this is the drugstore side. And I mean, come on, there's only one little blemish there and everything else is pretty concealed. Brows look the same, eyes look almost the same, but I feel like there's a little bit more wearing on the drugstore side. I feel like the pigmentation is not quite there anymore. And surprisingly enough, this highlight is pretty much all gone. However, the MUA is still really, really vibrant on my face. That's actually really surprising because I love the Moonstone Highlight by Becca, but seems that this one is actually a little bit longer lasting. So yeah, this is the makeup after five to six sort of hours. Honestly, I'm actually really, really surprised with how well everything's lasted on my face. Everything is still looking really good. I'm only like nitpicking at all the little small things. This video was definitely very eye-opening, so I'm really, really glad I did it. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you smash that huge thumbs up just down below, and also don't forget to subscribe if you are brand new. If you would like to see more videos like this, be sure to comment down below so I know but that is all from me thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you guys in my next video bye Mwah.